that on my calendar. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get this underway. Now this Bill uh, Green Hills Council Work Session, August 20th, 2013, to order. Would the clerk call the roll, please? Adams. Here. Freeze. Here. Halter. Here. Hermes. Here. Walter. Here. Walterman. Gone. <laughs> Merle. Here. Weird here. Uh, the, as everybody's probably aware, the manager will be with us tonight, so uh, we'll attend to the uh, details on our agenda and go on about our business. Uh, Traffic and Safety Committee, the dog ordinance. We've had first reading, but uh, we wanted to take this opportunity for you to uh, give us the details of the changes that are. Well, it, uh, really, only a couple of things. Uh, th there's a lot of change in the verbiage, but in effect, there's only really a couple of changes. We had two, you remember a year ago or so, we eliminated the pit bull clause right. in our legislation. Well, what this does is kind of brings it into line with the state's legislation. Not that we really had to, but it seemed to make sense to do that. Um, we went from a dangerous dog classification and a vicious dog classification, and we had the third classification. Um, nuisance dog, which basically the way I look at it, um, gets dogs in the system maybe a little quicker, gets them on the radar, so we, you know, we have a record of uh, the dog and the owner and the potential there. Hopefully the dog never does, it escalates beyond the nuisance dog, but it adds a category. It defines, uh, I think, the penalties a little bit more extensively and, and, and a, little, a little harsher, I think, than the old legislation. Um, and there's some other requirements, you know, chips uh, being installed, things like that, or the option for the magistrate to require, you know. Some of this is up to, you know, whether the dog, um, particularly vicious dog, whether they be destroyed or whether they be uh, um, constrained or constraints be put in and made more, more stiff mm -hmm. for the dog. Um, that's all kind of the magistrate. But, okay. uh, essentially, just pulls us into line with the state. What makes a dog a nuisance dog? That's, that's the part I'm looking for. Uh, threatening, threat, you know, if a dog, uh, you know, comes in, maybe doesn't bite their dog, or maybe doesn't bite them, but just goes running out and, and then growls and barks at somebody who's walking by, something like that, or a neighbor, or something like that. Doesn't really attack their dog. But, uh, so, but, yeah. By definition, it's a menacing fashion or apparent attitude of, of, of attack, or is attempted to bite or otherwise endanger any person. Okay. And then dangerous dog. Dangerous dog does not include a police dog that is injured. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. They all have that disclaimer on Right. Uh, mm -hmm. The dog bites an animal, right? The vicious dog bites a person. It's only a person or, or has killed another dog while. Well, that's a vicious dog, I think. Kills another dog, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, killed or caused serious injury to any person. Your dog is one without provocation and subject to blah blah blah. It's done any one of the following caused injury other than killing or serious injury or killed another dog or been subject to a third or subsequent violation division C of, sub -se of section 505 or 21 of this code. So a few nuisance dogs will become a dangerous dog and yeah, you escalate up. I think a dangerous dog is basically attacks another dog, a vicious dog attacks or kills another. Does anybody else have any questions about this? I mean, it doesn't seem particularly controversial. Now, I'm generally supportive of it because it, you know, we're, we're not in the business of making case law, and uh, if we're in line with the state law, it's more likely that someone else will make case law first up than we will. Okay. Fair enough. Does anybody else have anything to say about this subject? Well, David and I were talking before, and, and you know, neither, I would really like to have the people from legislation in there, to be honest, but uh, you know, being a little ranger on that issue, it's I don't think we should. I don't think you're the long ranger, but... Um, I think as, as the bill is being long ranger. Oh, yes. Yeah, because yes. I, I, I agree. But. You know, it was interesting, too, um, in the last day 
Uh, I've seen two different articles. I get a clips service of things that have insurance implications to it. And um, there was uh, a city whose SPCA is having problems getting pit bulls adopted and they're having to put down a disproportionate number of pit bulls because mm -hmm. people won't adopt them. And I'm thinking, what does that tell you? What does that tell you? And, and I'm not one to quickly legislate, you can't do this and you can't do that. You know, if everybody thinks it's wacky to wear blue on Tuesdays, I don't want to outlaw blue on Tuesdays, but it does tell you that a large segment of the population do not think that it's a good idea to have a well, if, if uh, when I was going through all the bite information a couple of years ago when we were hashing this out, uh, I was surprised at how many uh, labs and goldens and were were listed as in the dog bites. You know, I categorized everything by by breed uh, when I was doing this. So I looked it up and had it sorted. You could sort it however you wanted. I sorted it by breed, and of course, Pitbull was uh, by and large a huge majority. There were, I mean, number two was labs mm -hmm. and bites. And, and I thought, well, that's weird. You know, every lab I've ever been around is a sedate dog, easy to get along with. But then if you consider how many people have labs mm -hmm. and how many people have goldens, um, Small percentage the percentage of, of that breed dogs. is very low, but there's so many of them, it kind of gets them up in the statistics a little bit. Whereas pit bulls, um, they're, they're not nearly, the numbers aren't aren't there nearly as much, so it's a much higher percentage mm -hmm. of the existing dogs are, are, are in the bite statistics, so and it doesn't seem to be much. Not to say that, you know, there's a lot of pit bulls <coughs> that people raise and never bother anybody, and they're sweet dogs and mm -hmm. all that. I just feel like, you know, if, if they ever get triggered, there's something in them that, you know, makes yeah. them get out of control and cause damage. So. Okay. I agree with Mr. Reed's comments. Uh, it's as long as we are in compliance with the Hunter by Stone, um, we have uh, less problems, and that's the reason why I agree with that. Fair enough. Well, let's move on. Finance audit, Mr. Trees. You want to discuss, I guess, a further link moving the uh, meetings and work sessions? Yeah, and I don't want to do this super abruptly, and we we can't. Um, by process, but I want to um, look at the case of government, as I like to say on this one. Um, I, I just want feedback from folks, and I don't want somebody to come up here and go, when did you change the meeting? I want to, like, if, if we elect to do that, and maybe even consider just doing it at the first of the year with a new council. But you know, just from a finance standpoint, we're always working with stale information. Um, when we come here to the first, you know, we could be here on the second day of the month and it's just not enough time to get the information and, and, and work with it. And I think we'd be a better and more responsive council. And there's no reason that I'm aware of that we meet on the first and third, except we need two meetings a month tradition and tradition. And so uh, challenging tradition. And, but I want to hear from anybody that thinks otherwise. Like, well, does anybody have a problem, or is it a is second, fourth a hardship on anybody uh, with what you have uh, elsewhere in your life? I pretty much flush Tuesdays. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if you want to stay with Tuesdays, not look at an alternate day. Hey, I think Tuesdays are good. How much do you want me to challenge you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Monday, Mondays are often um, kick holidays. Does anyone yeah. check with uh, our uh, can <coughs> access guys? Oh, okay. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, if there have not, but I will do that as I continue. So um, <laughs> I'm certainly open to anybody's comments about, hey, this is a great idea or this is a terrible idea and why. Um, and I'll check with uh, Do I have to have a why if I say terrible? Yes, you do. You know, check. Honestly, I don't see this. It makes a dime with the difference, except as you said, that uh, you'll have the previous month's financial information more available. So, makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. not, you know, it's not a problem for anybody. Why not? No. Okay. Fair enough. Moving on. Community development bench program. <laughs> yes. What I thought we would do is um, just lay a little bit of a foundation of, about the topic. I don't 
think it would be wise to start drawing a lot of conclusions until we let some of the information settle in. Uh, I thought I'd recap where we are currently. Uh, this is a document that, and I'm sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't know the office was closed. I did copies, but uh, it's currently $600 to uh, obtain the bench and uh, pretty light as far as responsibility that we do retain the right to place it where we feel it should go, but we defer to our preference if someone would like to have something in a certain place, and we, I'm sure they try to accommodate that. Um, things that I, as far as questions to talk about, um, one is how many benches are needed for our community? Um, and 1,200. <laughs> we're at 133. I know that um, some, uh, some are needed over by the playground because I see a lot of moms sitting on the ground and pretty sad for a place that's got a very yeah, plethora of benches. Strike me that we could probably move a couple over there I would mm -hmm. think without so. too much pain. I, I would think so. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that takes place. I didn't know if we wanted to take a couple and um, I feel like they can be quickly refurbished. Uh, don't really want to send some of the ones that are bowed and you know, got splintering and that kind of thing over there. Uh, but it might be a good opportunity to refurbish a couple and then put them over there. Uh, that's my first thought. Uh, so what would be a good solution to too many benches? Uh, and what is too many benches? Uh, another uh, question is, uh, how do we need some, I think we need some kind of plan for maintenance uh, so that we don't people sitting on splintered benches and just uh, in disrepair. Uh, the other thing is there's there's a number of options uh, I think that we could look at. Do we take a certain time period and make that clear to residents that, and, I, and I'm just sketching, so like do we take 10 years or whatever it is and say, you know, after that period of time uh, that we put those in storage and then move on to another batch? Do we have an alternate tree program, which I think is a really uh, good thing, with as many trees as we're cutting down, um, and to have a nice plaque by a tree, I think very similar to what the dedication at the playground, I think that's a very good way to approach it. Uh, still working on the possibility, uh, we, we talked about water fountain and a couple other things that could happen at the conclusion of the 75th. Would that be a place to actually have pavers or and transfer, you know, some of the names from some of the older benches into? Well, I don't see. First of all, I don't see any reason to transfer names from old benches to okay. something new. Okay. Um, you know, like, like I say, th these things have a limited life, and I don't sure. think anybody is uh, buying into a perpetual. I don't know. I've, I've been stopped several times in my front yard by. Oh, I used to live here, and I, you know, so yeah. I'm very cautious about, uh, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, when it, it, especially it, when it wasn't spelled out. Yeah. And, you know, so. I came up with an idea, but I, I, if, if, if you give it a ten-year life, then make sure that you call the people that the bench is dedicated to over, because usually they're they're living here in Green Hills, and say your ten years is up. Do you want to have this refurbished? It would cost you this much to do, and that would be make that way. It's not no cost to us. So you can keep it there so you can re up town. Yeah, you can re up there. The, the only thing is to keep in mind, too, that as we'll talk about when we get into the pool discussion, um, there's a number of things on people's plates, and we that does entail someone keeping track. Do we date stamp them? You know, I just, yeah. we have to be careful what kind of. Yeah, the, the, there's a, that puts a lot of book work right. Um, right. on the back end, and you know, how do you have to figure out how long? Is Bench long enough. One thirty one has been there. Right, right. right. Um, so, I, you know, I think the more I do this, the more I, I feel like it's valuable to, you know, kind of sit with the facts, let them sink in a little bit, give people an opportunity to respond, and um, and you know, see where we want to go from there. You can, you, and I think there's an advantage of look wearing different hats. One is that. It is a very emotional, um, heartfelt thing for some people and very significant to them. And we don't want to, and I don't think anybody here wants to make light of that. But on the other hand, uh, we 
we, we need benches that are maintained. There's plenty of photographs of uh, benches that are in really, really poor shape. And also, at what number do we stop doing it? You know, it's another yeah. question. So realistically, right now, since I've been living in Green Hills for at least 35 years, there's going to be a bench named after me? There could be. So, I'm, I'm you've got $600. Yeah, you can yeah, name yeah, a bench after you right now. Don't ask me for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I agree, and I just think, um, I don't know, with that many benches, um, how many do we need? And then do we well, maybe start to switch gears and do, I think, a tree is a good idea. Um, Glendale, they just have the painted squirrels like they did the pigs um, around Cincinnati. No, no, I'm not saying, I'm saying, I'm saying so is, it's, well, it's my <laughs> yeah, is it something that we do something different rather than right. do we now accumulate, if we've got 250 benches around town, maybe it starts to turn into something else. Well, and to go with that, and I think that the Design and Beautification Committee, if we feel like there should be some planning to it, some, oftentimes they're just like road straight up. And I think that there's certain places that make sense. You know, obviously now with the playground, you know, they, they can do places. Use three or four benches there, right. no problem. Right, and, not, and not four. Um, a little bit of um, thought behind where they go and, and a little bit of a plan, which I'd like to put together as a, a proposal for us. Yeah, but I agree that needs to probably be somewhere it's just going to be <coughs> business and I think you definitely need to define when somebody invests in it what's the time frame what, what do you get in I think we ought to anticipate just for conversation's sake say we said 135 was the number we need after surveying figuring it out everybody's in agreement on that we also got to anticipate what do we do if there's 135 out and nothing comes available Say, say that again. The, the, the possibility of waiting, oh, okay. waiting list. Um, okay. And can somebody re up a bench? And, you know, I may never get my bench because of the waiting list. Well, we got to look at that, all those angles, I think. Right. And, that, and that's the beauty of a tree program mm -hmm. where we need the trees and also I would think it would be a lower cost than $600. I, in fact, one thing I would like to find out is um, the actual price cost of it. Selling them at cost, and, and contrary to the, the last thing that I brought up, that um, I was concerned about painted cement, uh, and, and I know that I guess some of the new ones aren't painted, but there is one that is painted. That's a whole nother level of problems. The minute that cement chips, it will look bad and pretty quickly. Um, so, but I think if we have a tree program or some alternate, that could somewhat address it. Well, one of the concerns I have, and this is all due respect to all the fine pioneers that have come and gone before me, but I think if we get too much, I mean, does aesthetically and trying to, the, the feel of the village, is it more like a memorial and turning into like a graveyard? It was, rather than now when I, came here, when I came here, that was my first thought. And, but again, I, and I'm not trying to detract from it, but when I first came here, I thought, oh my goodness, this is like tombstone bench. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think, and, and a lot of them, a lot of them literally were. Right. Uh, but if there wasn't an easy alternative, right, then you know, we're sort of encouraging that behavior, but we want a memorial that we're gonna buy a bench, because that's what you got. Right. If you've got something, what uh, if we, you know, if you know the product to, to offer, and I think the tree thing is, is a great idea. Um, that would have a plaque and yeah, you know, you know the park. The park does that real nice. Mm -hmm. They've got a little it's a cement. Well, it's a little cement thing with a, a little plaque and right. big enough. You know, you can't read it from down the street, but right. that's oh, okay. Uh, you can point to it and say, "Oh, that's my grandpa's tree." <laughs> Sorry about that. Talk about maintenance. You know, obviously, you need to do something about. Policy or location where to put the benches. That to me, uh, uh, design beautification, I uh, can put this village manager for that. You know, sure, you're all about. Now, replacing old benches, um, that probably ought to be just done on an as needed basis. And again, that's manageable. The only thing I really have a problem. 
problem with this cap on the numbers. You know, to me, it's like uh, uh, it's like the ugly dog thing. You know, uh, if you ask me to define an ugly dog, I can't. But if I see one, I can tell you. So um, I don't know what the right number of benches is, but when we get too many, I think we'll, everybody will know it, and we won't have to sell it to anybody. So I don't. I would. Well, in other to words, me, cap on the numbers is not important. It's not worth worrying about it. It would require a lot of study and effort and, and, well, and be probably a debatable uh, point of discussion and a point of complaint. And, and I'd say when we got too many, let's worry about it. Let's worry about it. That's the way I feel about it. I think we're pushing too many now. Uh, based see, on I don't. Yeah. I mean, we're just sitting there talking. We need a bunch well, of you can see they around. They probably could use more of the diploma. Uh, well, that's no, just, we're, that's we're talking about relocating. We're talking about relocating yeah. now. Um, if you look uh, at the library, I mean, there, and I don't even know if there's some in storage for that matter. Um, I, I don't know. I don't feel like we need to shy away from putting a cap on it because some of them are have been here a while, and it's not like well, that's a different issue. Yeah, yeah. But being refurbished is something because the one thing that I found out from a structural engineer when we went a big project down in Clifton and. This house was built in 1964, and they had these massive beams that were cantilevered them out. And it was painted from the very beginning, and it's been painted several times, but dry rotted it because of jet, and water didn't have any way to breathe there to escape. So what the structural engineer said, look, we've got to go ahead and cut these out, put the new wood in, in, this, in certain areas, take all the paint off because it seals it, and just stain it because it needs to breathe. It'll last forever. But people don't think that, but they think, oh, I've got to paint it and conceal it. And, I, and that's not the case. I, I mean, so that's what we were talking about. Yeah, with well, Jeff, about I think planning them down, getting down original wood. For that. And um, I have a planer, and we run some of the boards through there. It cleans them up. I'm not sure all the boards are savable, right. but um, by just running them quickly through a planer, they sharpen up really nice, and we have an opportunity to stain. What about that stuff they make decks out of? Well, I checked into yeah, that. Yeah, so it's really pricey. Well, it's and the problem the is, I found out, and I've talked really to not. two different vendors, it, they, they don't have the structural strength to span it. You'd have yeah. to put a third thing, and we had talked about, well, if they had a U-channel, could we put a metal rod, and just it's very expensive. Um, and then Greg brought up another point that with the decks, if people have a problem walking out on the deck with their bare feet, if it's the composite material. It's, it's hot. It's oh, hot. It's we don't have to paint them, but we don't, maybe there'll be less maintenance because less people will actually sit on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your, butt, your butt's a great thing. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that was, that you know, at first I thought that was an easy get, and there was some real issues with the mm -hmm. cost. Yeah, for that matter, also on the idea of the tweet, they would have to also have some kind of guidelines uh, in case that gets hit by a storm, by a lightning. What happens then? Are we yeah, that's a that's a whole program that I think yeah, we have to. It has to be yeah, be thought a little bit and uh, work out some of the kinks of that because I mean we do get some of those storms, we do get lightning and how about we just get trees that die? You know? Yeah, yeah, I mean yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, and to save on a lot of those issues of you know how do you alert people what to do when mm -hmm. that happens? Correct. To me, the paper program. Basically, maintenance free. It, 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 oh, you've never had tried to maintain. You know, mm -hmm. Try, try uh, keeping the grass out. The grass out of that. Well, it's not to the. I wouldn't think it's to the extent of the have to paint it. And then, cool. mm -hmm. No, it's still the other thing. Dig. dig. No, for me, the other thing it does though is that way it it still memorializes someone. But to me, I. I don't know. I think with these benches, sometimes it's keeps us well, looks wise. You know, do we want to move forward? Yeah, and, 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 you know, I, I'm kind of with you, and I'm hoping that if we can establish a tree program, mm -hmm. uh, that we start seeing a lot more trees and a lot fewer benches get requested by people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the thing with pavers, you know, pavers certainly have their place, but you know, typically that's for a, a focus project. You've got a, a location, you've got a deadline that you need people. Unfortunately, you sell papers after you can take out old ones, you know, you know engraved and, and, and replace them. But that's more like, you know, I'm going to build a fountain or something. And 
Yeah, and I, for me, I don't know if it's an apple. Thinking from putting the shoes on with someone who bought a bench, paid $600, very um, like emotional decision, something that you walk on and you don't see, um, for me, it's not an apples to apples comparison. So I agree, but I think the family that has done that, that's right. very important and that sticks oh, out and they love it and then sure. everybody else that has no idea who Bob Smith was, they can <clears throat> us, just to be frank. And you can just, actually do it with a sidewalk, cut out a section of sidewalk and make sure that their name is like in a corner of that sidewalk because normally sidewalks are three and a half foot by three foot and it'd be put maybe in front of their, in that house that they're living in. Right. That's a great I, idea. I kind of like, and there was um, a little bit of pushback on this because they said it's a memorial. Um, I kind of like if we did establish a fountain or, you know, if by a miracle we get the statue or something and you had a wall with the different names in it, <laughs> that to me is um, a step closer to what the benches do uh, ver versus something you walk on. But um, I like that. As a beautification committee looked at what other communities do, um, kind of, you know, in that same vein, and then the second part of the question is, is what about the other two Greenbelt cities? Not that we have to be identical to them, but sometimes, you know, they those people tend to think like we do, have the same issues because of age. I've taken some pictures of Wyoming's, and that's when I found out that that was dedicated at 125 years, um, and they have a flagpole, and they have pavers around their flagpole is one thing they've done. I can't say we've done anything that's extensive. I'd like to regroup on this, put, more of an organized proposal together, and to, but the big reason today was just get a feel and see what you guys thought about it. Do you guys think that the plaques would be a target for vandals or, or you know, the vandals or something like that? Quite honestly, uh, destroy them or well, the, the whole I was concerned about the whole metal thing because I, we were at um, a bridge, <laughs> yeah, historic yeah. bridge. Oh, big yeah. uh, metal yeah. plate, and all that was there were the bolts and yeah. the triangles of the metal where they just yeah. uh, came and cut it and off. And, mm -hmm. um, in fact, if anybody wants to start a business of doing metallic looking plastic uh, <laughs> plates, I bet they, they could have some. Um, but I think we have to look at that. I think any, in fact, overall, and we've talked about this before, we really need to think, it's not just Oh, this would be good for now, but you know, what's it look like in five and ten years? What's it going to take to maintain something? Just like you had brought up about the trees and stuff. So, I, I think those are all good thoughts. And, and it's whatever, a sidewalk. And whatever it is, I think it should be done in a dignified manner, uh, manner, mm -hmm. um, because of what it represents. Maybe we can make a little triangular wedge so where the sidewalks aren't even, we could fill it in. Oh, yeah, oh, cool. <laughs> Believe me, we're in a discussion. How about we fix the sidewalks? This ramp is dedicated to Greg Herbie. <laughs> well, last note, and then, you know, I, I kind of already said it, but I think it's critically important that we honor those that were here before right. and remember that. Yeah, but yeah. I think we also need to look you know, how are we attracting new families to come to Green Hills and make this their home. It, it, and it might mm -hmm. be um, a little bit lofty. I think one of the best ways we can honor them is really do well with this building. You know, overall, because we could have all the pavers and flagpoles and everything, and if it if it's just run down, then you need four four community days at the pool every year. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I had everything from once a week to yeah, that's three right. times, that's right. and it's funny. It always comes when you're like, I'm barely making it through this one. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we're out. But there was a lot of you know what the things. appropriate response for that is is. Would you like to join our committee? Yeah. Would you like to make that effort? I think that's a great idea. You yeah, run with that. Bring me the yeah. proposal. Right. Well, uh, your, your idea, like the wall, I don't know where you put it or how exactly it would be. The, just the idea of a destination right. that we could all be proud of, that the people who put their loved ones' names mm -hmm. in that would be proud of it and, and say, well, it's, you know, it's not in front of the library, it's located right. On the common wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been to Washington, D.C., and you see all the walls of the yeah. wars. I'll there. tell you what, that of course is a big crazy one. Yeah, that'd be a novel. Oh, You've yeah. ever been there. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's really something. Yeah. Very, pretty, uh, I wasn't even in the war. Yeah. My dad's name is over in Germany. I don't know. Is it? <laughs>
They don't have a wall like that. No, there's one. In they Luxembourg. have a wall of shame. There's a, there's one in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. Is there? Yeah. For um, it's a U.S. cemetery. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was there on the 4th of July, mm -hmm. and they had all kinds of pride. Uh, yeah. It's going to make sure that everybody in the in the red zone, you're going to go ahead and talk about the pool. Yeah. It's uh, a okay. money You've got uh, account. Out. Just to make sure that the red zone has flowers on the 4th of July. Okay. And it's black. Yeah. All right. Moving on. The pool. Yes. Yeah, so. Um, First of all, why don't we go through this every year? <laughs> well, let me let me uh, let me start off by saying, and I I'm still you know I went hunting trying to figure out how this got on my flyer. I'm sure I'm responsible. I I'm not sure. It's all a blur. But um, <laughs> on on the flyer, continue to enjoy the pool weekends through the lab, through Labor Day. I put that on the flyer. In fact, when Connie contacted me and said, hey, they said there's a flyer out there saying you'll be open through Labor Day. I'm like, I only handed two pieces of paper out and then one at the event and then this flyer. And I sent them to her, I didn't even look at it because I don't remember that. I don't I don't know if it was a two in the morning thing. I doubt very Apparently seriously. it's there. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. And um, which did <coughs> and does, you know, put, uh, Yvonne and Connie and, and the staff in an awkward position because, and I I think I'm one of the biggest proponent, you know, um, fighters for, let's do things the right way in the village and, and not have any of us or anybody else um, jumping ahead and then letting them know by the way. Well, this was a by the way that I'll take uh, responsibility for. Um, still not sure what happened, but it happened. Um, it's really not your fault. We, we, this happened last year. We should have. I don't know why we didn't address this. Well, it came and we up. And, this year. and it, I had, I, yeah, it, it came up, you know, because she did come to us and say, mm -hmm. hey, I'm doing this, this. Now, the only other thing I'll, I'll tell you is I went looking at, and it's always hard to compare because some places have more money, more staff, and all this other stuff. But uh, Fairfield, Ohio uh, is doing what. I'm proposing we do, which is the last day was our, their last regular, they had to go to the full days, full weeks, ended on August 18th. They're gonna stay open the 24th and the 25th. They're gonna be open the 31st, 1st, and 2nd. And it's, I'm calling it, it's like feathering out like Kings Island does. It doesn't have like solid weeks and stop. I did find Mount Healthy is stopping at the 18th full-fledged. Uh, Sharonville does the same thing um, with the two weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I had talked to Yvonne and she called it out in her email. You know, we may, I think we make this, like Bud said, our policy that, you know, we end that August 18th, depending on how it falls, um, and then uh, have two weekends, which includes Labor Day. And communicate that to everybody. That doesn't change. I don't care if it rains. I don't care if it snows. Um, Did you say that about? <laughs> yeah. I, we'll just I will turn it into an ice skating rink. Well, last year it did rain too. Yeah, yeah it, it was cold. Well, it, 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 we stayed it, open. It was cold and raining. But you can't close it. It's hot and yeah. sunny. Yeah, I'm sure uh, yeah. And the cost is more than you would think. No, it's over a thousand. It's a thousand dollars a day. Yeah, plus right. or minus. Now, one thing I did do is. Um, so, and the other thing on this mix, uh, in working with uh, SwimSafe, they, uh, it took a lot of pressure off them for us to keep 12 to 5 hour, you know, so noon to 5 it will be open those days is the recommendation, okay. you know, because they have a lot of kids that go, have gone off to college, um, they can man it a lot better. So, maybe next year the only change would be if they, if we maintain full regular hours. Um, if they have enough warning, but we can address that later. And uh, what I had pulled from last year was, and, and the tough thing about uh, getting the actual numbers for this is, you know, it, it all, there's so many variables in the mix because if you have a bunch of people that just come and pay for the day versus it's all members that mm -hmm. have already paid and there's no offset of the cost. Mm -hmm. So it's a tough thing to really nail down. Uh, last year, the cost to run a pool approximately two hundred dollars per hour. That amount uh, will vary based on the number of attendees at any given time. Uh, we are considering five additional days. This was from last year. 
I do have a sign. I can put it up. If you guys are in agreement, I'll send a one call around tomorrow. I, I think it's a good thing to do. I think another thing that played into it is it seemed like they had a lot of fun on community day at the pool. Oh, yeah. And um, you know, they have that contrast like, oh, it's over. Or some of them were thinking, it's not over, but it's over, you, you know. So that, that could have played into it as well. But your thoughts? A couple things. I think we're having this discussion, whether you have that on your fire or not. I texted Yvonne, I didn't hear back, but um, I had six or seven people come up to me. And oh, that's yeah. why I prompted it last year, is because what? Mm -hmm. Polls are always open through Labor Day. What's well, going on? no, they aren't. And ours hasn't been consistently a long while. How long is that? Because I thought it was just the past yeah. couple of years that we had closed it before. Dave, any historical perspective? Uh, right. The date's the foggy, date. but. Uh, I think uh, we pretty much did the part time during my tenure. Uh, you know, we used to be open almost full time till through Labor Day, uh, and then uh, I don't remember when we changed it to uh, you know, the last two weekend, weekends. Weekends only, Phil. And some of it was because the school changed when they went back too. Yeah, you know, sure. so right. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, they didn't go back this early. Let's yeah. Now more school. and more colleges are going back in August. And yes, they did. But I had a lot of people come up to me and say, you know, they just seemed really surprised. So, but it wasn't on the membership. If you bought a membership, no. it, it didn't have to. And, and that's a, that was surprised to me that I, because I asked the same question, like, what was communicated when you bought a membership? And um, and I'm surprised that it doesn't say. But then I found, when I looked at some other communities, they don't. Number of them don't say either. So See, I think we, should. we should try to make that more clear. And I'm not trying to castigate anybody in the process. Let's just make the process better and the, the communication better. And I agree. So when you pay the 185 you know, if we're considering, if we're considering um, doing this on an ongoing basis and it's going to be five grand more a year. What does that mean from a budget standpoint? Does the village pick up the five grand? Do we make some change to the cost? I, I'm very resident, uh, reticent to increase the cost of swimming pool membership when we have a cold summer. <coughs> and you know, people go, boy, we are only get our money's worth, and then now they're raising the price too. Yeah, I don't want to run anything. Well, they'll be hot, and then we'll have 40, 90 degree days next year. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, I don't, yeah. And it's tough, I mean, yep. I, but I do think if we have a, pretty standard policy and let the weather fall where it may. I don't know if that's something that is considered a recreation, something that could go into recreation. For sure. That's, that's, that's recreation. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So, I mean, There's two ways. right now, the, the question on the table is, do we open five additional days and yes, roll the dice? And I suspect that there's saying. money somewhere to pay for this. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Well, we'll I think we could find find money somewhere to do that. Um, my question to you, Mr. Mayor, is 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 there anything uh, legislatively that we have to do? Um, well, we don't have a chance to really do that, though, do we? Well, well, the one well thing, then I don't want to do something that we can't do. Well, can I ask a question? Well, I, I don't. I honestly believe that if you look at the email, there's council should agree that the next council meeting an ordinance be passed adding this dollar amount to the contract. So well, you know, that we have to do. Mm -hmm. That we, we have, we've got to add that money to Swim Safe. To the yeah, we are, but we have to be agreed. So the Swim Safe contract was until the 18th? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, um, they, they've done their thing. They've kept the pool operating the time they said they were done. And they've heard very good comments about the What's that? Yes, sir. See a proper loss on the pool today. Uh, we've had a lot of good weather, I would think. We've had a lot of crummy weather. It's been cold for the pool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the I first think half of the yeah. ground's been down. I think overall it's been you know, mm -hmm. The number that we have, the 5320, that's just by taking the, the contract days, dividing. I don't know. That's just think really that, high to me. Uh, yeah, it's about a thousand bucks a day to run the pool. Yeah. Yeah, they, they got one shift that's going to be in so many uh, five or six. 
have to be there for, we for, five, last year. for five days. Yeah, and that's that what it costs. Yeah. If you take the whole contract in the whole summer, it comes out. Well, yeah, keep in mind that's offset by by revenue. Yeah, re well, yeah, I, I would say if I'm going to do this, that we push the marketing side too and get as much well, revenue. My understanding is some of the overflow was paying for the golf course that we were getting from the pool. Well, the pool's never been a money maker. It's been always about a push. Yeah. Okay. The pool's not a big one. In the last. No, I didn't say it was a big one. And, and I don't anticipate. You know, we're going to offset a tremendous amount of money, or a tremendous amount. Sure. Of this. Five thousand dollars from walk-in sales. Well, that's tough. Yeah, and it, that's so far the first weekend, if you look out, it's eighty-two to, and yeah. eighty-seven. Mm -hmm. that's side. Well, if we're gonna make this happen, the only way we can do it is to if we're in green or something. The only way we can do it is a special meeting, right? I don't know. If, I don't know if the manager has the authority to spend five thousand dollars without council approval, knowing that we'll, we'll go back and I just we've got the money. I think it's just the change of the contract. That's what the council has to agree to. It's not necessarily the money that's going to be going into it. It's, it's agreed that the contract's going to be extended in for the extra cash based on what is there. some kind of consensus agreement that this is what we want to do have the manager in the morning check with mr. Forbes find out if there's anything we have to do legislatively if we have to have a special meeting we have it we'll, we'll just have to we just have it. yeah and we have to I don't want to be run we have to have it to, to get this week right we, yes well, we yes. could have it at like 11.59 on Saturday and then meet in the deep end. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's going to do the hot dogs this time? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, to that end. That, yeah, I, yeah. That, that sounds like. Mm -hmm. So, council's general wishes as we do this. Yes. So yes. see a lot of not yes. Yes. And we need to get a price for swim safe next year. To address this up front. That's yeah, yeah. That's, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys about tonight, I guess now's a good time to bring it up. What do you think about you know, Bass and Track is part of the village, and technically they're not part of the village, but they are. But why most of the people so they, 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 they don't pay taxes. taxes, you know, they don't pay taxes. We're talking about them, talking about promotion here and a chance of increasing income in the pool. And what do you think about uh, extending uh, resident rates to? I'm not just saying this for my daughter and for, <laughs> and for Kim and Ann. It, it has nothing to do with that, really. That I just was thinking, you know, I don't know how many houses are over there. There's a hundred and somewhere in that area. Yeah, we could pick up 95. 95. <laughs> Dave, do you think that would generate any uh, memberships or not? Yeah, we could. It would probably cut our revenue. It would probably cut. No, the only thing, thing is, no. absolutely, yeah. we, we won't. So you don't think anybody don't over think, there that's not a member? I don't think it's going to push anybody okay. to, to do it. Uh, and also, it, it's something I was noticing as I looked at other people's fees and everything, too, because I've heard multiple comments about, hey, I just want to visit, like, you know, ten times, five times, and I'm not going to buy a membership. It seems a little pricey, that kind of thing. I really would like it. I think there should be more of a gap between resident more of a benefit for residents than non-residents I look when I started looking around for pools as you guys know there's not that many around and so we're fielding other places we're not getting any revenue from these other do we I don't think we do. I'll probably get something for the forest park yeah or something mm -hmm. okay so maybe then that yeah, it's it's a nice yeah. yeah well how about at the end of the year when we figure out whether we made money lost money or whatever We'll have a work session where we talk about the pool. We'll come up with recommendations for pricing, as well as um, firm up the timing. The timing. One of the ideas I thought about, and it's just 
the stage of life at 817 Karini is, wouldn't it be cool, like, the second full day of school for public school for kids, there was like a 10 to 2 mom's pool exclusion. You gotta be a mom. You, you gotta be, just ladies day at the pool from 10 to 2. And just let the moms go after they've shuffled all the kids off to school. I think that'd be kind of fun. And it might be fun if, you know, some mom was here and her sister lived in, you know, Coleraine Township and her girlfriend lived over in Wyoming or Fairfield and they all came over. I, I think it might be an attractive way to showcase the community. Well, another thing too is there. There was, I would say, almost an over-the-top response um, about community day at the pool. They said, I heard things like most fun I've ever had at the pool and that kind of thing. And I wouldn't be opposed to doing this maybe twice during the summer. It's another thing that if we're promoting membership, we could throw in the mix. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you don't have like. Uh, 75th events every other month that might be different. <laughs> 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 Perhaps doing it uh, at the beginning in order to attract people in the community yeah. to join at that point yeah. uh, the pool so it would be early enough. Like the first weekend in June, for example, or something like that. And that way they still have plenty of time to enjoy the pool after they have tried that. Okay. We can sell membership like that. Pool horse. So what I'll do is I'll wait to Let's, hear. You wait to hear. Well, I'm just saying that what, if you wait want to hear what the legal eagles say, and then if they say uh, we don't have to worry about it, we'll, legal because we'll, 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 we'll deal with the legislation. Right. Right. I mean, we have to have mm-hmm. a meeting. Maybe we'll actually meet at seven. Uh, right. It'll probably be Thursday at seven, if I had to guess. Okay. It, it's mayor's court night Thursday night. Oh, it is. We could do it over there. We yeah. could do it across the hall. Yeah. And it'd be a five minute meeting, so that would be too yeah. big a, a challenge, but thank yeah, you for reminding me about that. that. Day as well. mm-hmm. So we have to meet it there. And there would be three of us for sure here. You'll be here for the recreation meeting if you were there now. Well, so what do we need? How many do we, we need? need? What yeah. do we need? We, we would need to have five members. If we could, we'd have to pass have to suspend the rules and pass That's not a good thing. So yeah. we have three already that are going to be here for that meeting, so we need to get two more. Uh, yeah, we can do this. We can make it happen. We can oh, make yeah. it happen. Okay. All right. Good enough. Okay. okay. Ladies and gentlemen, anything else? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, you guys want to discuss the uh, metal trucks that are going around? Uh, we had kind of a little complicator with these guys going around Tuesdays collecting metal. Uh, my neighbor had uh, their two of the kids' bikes were in the front yard, and uh, in the middle of the afternoon on garbage day, the bikes disappeared. Now, it may not have been the metal guys, I don't know, but the bikes were out front near where the garbage cans were. And, uh, um, you know, these, these are rough looking dudes. Uh, the trucks look like they're ready to fall over on their sides. They got them stacks of high by the time they get done. Um, aren't 
they supposed to, or vendors are supposed to be any solicitors? That, that's technically probably not a solicitor. No. Uh, does, that, does that fall under any kind of? I, I, or does anybody even have a problem with it? I have mi honestly, I have mixed thoughts about them. If somebody's trying to make ends meet and that's what they're yeah, doing to do it, I don't yeah. want to be the guy that <clears throat> rains on their parade or takes their Cheerios from them. You know what, bud? That, that's one of the things that we learned when I was growing up, even on Fat Court. It was a court area. Left the bikes out, they were stolen by some of the kids in the neighborhood. So we learned we put our bikes away. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, they were actually out there, and, and I, I wish it wouldn't have happened. And like, you know, because I did talk to him as well. Nobody knows who it could have been. I would think it probably was somebody like that and threw it in there and just, they dropped it off somewhere else because they could probably sell it. And you can cover a lot of different scenarios, but they should put their bikes away. Well, yeah. true. Well, I mean, I had but my bike like, sold out that's of just, our front yard on Congress Street. It's really just a bike That's what initiated the yeah. conversation. It's a, it's is, it, is it the junk guy? Well, I mean, yeah. there's maybe it was the junk guy. I know one of the people that does it is a resident of the village, too. And I'm not yeah, saying that that complicates it or, or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's just a fact. Um, I don't know that that's solicited. I, I think we, we probably have to have a discussion with either with the law director or the police chief, you know, are these vehicles in violation of any uh, traffic ordinances? Um, and taking stuff out of the trash is crime. I'm yeah. think of this. Somebody gets rid of it. Dave? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what laws have changed, but years ago, originally, any once the garbage went out on the street, it was the property of the village. And nobody was allowed, technically, to take any garbage other than the village. That's when we picked up our own garbage. Uh, so, because we had people that would go around to do scrap years ago, and we'd stop them from taking it. Uh, when we recycled newspapers, we'd have people, as the price of paper went up, we'd come out and grab the newspapers, which was in effect taking money away from the village because we got the money for the newspapers. And uh, we, n we never arrested anybody or cited them to court, but when the police stopped them, they made them take all the newspapers and put them in the newspaper storage bin that the village had for its recycling program and thanked them for picking them up for us. <laughs> <laughs> See, part of the issue I have, though, is um, I try to recycle my metal any time I can, just rather than throw it in the trash. So I don't know if... Yeah, the village isn't recycling metal now anymore. Since right, so if we not that, that, that's not good. It's not curbside. Green, because we have got the three dumpsters on the shelf. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So somebody's going to throw out a big hunk of metal, and somebody else can take it to the recycle yard rather than it going to the landfill. Well, yeah. so, I mean, the, the, we should probably. I think that's a good thing for Bud's committee to look at. Borsky, it's on you. All right. All right. Is anybody? I, mean, is this, I, don't, I, you know, I can't see chasing after non problems Right. There. I mean, the, the the trucks are nasty and unsightly, but they do perform some sort of service. There's, there's some uh, sort I, of, I, mean, there's I, any, I see. It's a, there's no threat to the public safety. I don't well, think. wasn't there, was like some, some, wasn't there the some discussion about the height? You know, the ones that are like you can't have. Well, that's, or put above your. Well, that, I mean that that is. Because uh, I thought we talked about it during a council meeting. Or something. You know, I I don't know if the village has an ordinance against it, but I, you know, as far as secure loads, that I think we probably do have an unsecure load, and usually that that kind of stuff comes to play when something falls off and does some damage, or somebody sees some, you know, the officer sees something fall off of a truck. We'll, we'll look into it and then we'll get some information together and then we decide whether we even want to do it going further. Fair enough. Yeah, the next work session. Uh, calendar items, real quick. We've got a concert tomorrow. Uh, Red Commission, 7 30 Thursday. Potential special session, 7 o'clock Thursday. And that'll be an hour, that's an hour after court starts. So it, mm -hmm. it won't, we won't be uh, over, well, we may be overlapping a little bit, but. If we do it, it'll be we'll do it in the caucus room across the hall. Seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock. And um, planning commission on the twenty seventh. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. Okay. Fair enough. On the twenty sixth as well. 
Okay. 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 Hey, um, Tony sent us a really nice note and, um, on the ISO rating. Yeah. That is a phenomenal accomplishment. Oh, yes. um, I've spent, you know, the last 30 years in the insurance business and um, know how important that is. That every homeowner in every business, that ISO rating impacts what they pay in insurance premium with 99%, let's say because there are situations where it doesn't. And um, I would venture, in the United States, there's only, they're grade one to 10. There's only one, currently I believe that there is only one fire department rated a one. And 61, hmm. Country, countrywide. Rated a one? Mm -hmm. Well that's certainly changed. <laughs> there are the deeds. Okay. And I got I uh, I got this in the mail from uh, ISO, and I had a chat with the chief about it last night. And countrywide, it's um, you know there's not many. That the in Ohio there are no one rated. Uh, when I fire when I first started doing stuff with ISO, there was one, and it was New York City, mm -hmm. and nobody else could get it because the water supply requirements were so rigid. Yeah. Um, um, from multiple sources. In the state of Ohio, there are 31 class two fire departments, 112 class three, mm -hmm. of which we are a member, uh, 299 class four, 585 class five, 627 okay. class six. 3,000, 4,000, how many fire departments are there? In the uh, state of Ohio? 850, Yeah, they're about. Yeah. They're a bunch of class nines, which are the rural. That, that basically means we ain't got no water. You got no fire. Yeah, you got no fire hydrants. Yeah. But we've been a class four since the late '70s. Mm -hmm. That's what Tony told me, and it was a big achievement then to get to class four. So I mean, um, you know, if, if you look at this bar chart, there we are, the yeah. class three. Mm -hmm right there, that little bar, mm -hmm. all the way to the left, and you know the bulk of the communities are in that um, five and six range. So but it, it big, is big, huge. It, it's it's a, huge. It's a benefit for every person that lives here. That's pretty uh, mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't come without a lot of work. There's three pieces to the, um, there's three major categories. Um, you know, one of them is communication, one of them is water supply, and then there's a kind of an all other category that includes all their training, the equipment that you have. I remember going through an ISO inspection 30 years ago with a fire department, and they count the number. You have to have the right number of Phillips head screwdrivers and the right size and everything. I mean, it is rigorous, and just the record keeping. And if you don't do the records, it's not like you can go back and recreate all the training records or all the hydrant maintenance records. So this is just a huge um, verification that they're doing a ton of things really well. So you'll call this everyone's attention on the council meeting? No, I'm not going to be here. Yeah. I'm not going to be here. For, well, we can bring for, it up because for we're... For September. Okay. But I sent well, something. I, I, I sent an email to Tony, and I, yeah, and I, I feel this way strongly. This is all Tony. Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, his it's department his, had to do it. It's his leadership. But without Tony, yeah. This is leadership, yeah. yeah. This is without, yeah. But being in our committee, maybe uh, Mr. Walterman or I can bring that up in, uh, in your absence, Mr. Brees. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Bring what up? This, this business, I'll probably talk about it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not like I've squeaked by going from a, a four to a three. The ratings are, you know, 90 and above, so one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the, the range for a three is 70 to 79.99. Our total score was 76.87. We aren't that far. And you know, I don't know what the heck you've got to do to, to get those few extra points, but we're not that far mm -hmm. from being a class two department. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe that's maybe that's tough. You know, it's kind of a lot of other things to get there. In that, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would doubt that sincerely, but uh, we'll let we'll let Tony blow his horn about that a little bit. When he <laughs> hey, that's yeah. why that's why I brought it up because he won't. He will. He will. He will mention it. Mention he will it. not. He'll be he, quite humble. Yeah, and he'll give the credit to the department. He will. Yeah, and Debbie was standing up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. One other quick thing I just thought of. Oh, all right. Uh, I'm putting together and would like to have a fall banner um, approved so that it replaces the 75th. And what I'm hoping to do, though, it'll be uh, the community building, uh, fall colors, and then at the bottom, um, we'll put the 75th at the bottom okay. of it so that. And then you're going to take it off take it off and yeah. reuse them next year. Because I mean it's Yeah, yeah, nice fall banner but that we can reuse, reuse. without. Yeah. And you see, you're gonna auction off the other ones that are out there now. Yeah, I think and I'm gonna get fun. I think we're gonna auction the original set off possibly. Okay. Cool. 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 Um OLR, you know, had their that really is uh -huh. they did the deal last weekend and uh, I couldn't believe it. I mean they could what? I mean, there are booths all over the place, there are rides all over the place, there were people all over the place. You know, it's, it's chicken or the egg. Does it take a lot of booths and a lot of rides to make these things successful, or do they have the infrastructure and the, uh, I forget the answer, and the, uh, and the people in the church that attend the thing to bring attendance up? I can't believe that the reason that all those people were there is because of uh, people in the church I'm no, sure it's a contributing. Anything. It's a big deal, and people drive by and they see it and they want to go there and have some fun. And it's it's, it it's big, exactly what you said. They've got a lot of people involved. involved and they work on it all year long. They've got they've got infrastructure. They've got one motive, and that's to make money for the church. One goal. Well, and if, the Green Hills Festival has always been, uh, you know, ever since I've been obliquely involved with it, it's, you know, you're kind of on your own as a, a booth uh, thing. You know, we used to do booths for the Beachwoods PTA, and it was, you know, always the, the business case of, okay, my booth space is going to cost me this much, um, I need volunteers for these many hours, I need to have a game that, you know, costs this to play, I need this many plays, I need, um, Prizes, but prizes can only cost me this much because you know my purpose is to make money. Uh, and there were times when I'd have been happy to give the PTA the fifty or hundred dollars we made, not have to contend with trying to just get all the people together. Right. It's it, it's tough, and well, that's that's really the, the big difference. Well, and there's another that. difference as far as promotion goes. I've seen the signs; yes. they they cross pollinate. Churches on the other side of town will yeah. have. Um, the ones from St. Bart's were here, the ones from here were from St. Yeah. Bart's, now they have the one from Fairfield, yeah. I think it's St. John's. I mean, everybody yeah. is contributing with that. St. Vegas, when it had it, it, was the same thing. I was on a finance committee for OLR for three years, okay? And the budget is in there for 50 grand. They have, they, they have it in their budget, $50,000 they have to make. So it's it's all, they so assume they're break even this 50 grand. No, no, it's a part of their budget. Their no, their goal is to make 50, but. Right, but it's, it's a part of their budget. The 50 grand's in their budget. If they go below that, uh oh, what do we have to cut? Yeah, as far as what's going on with the church. You know, that's 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 profit. You're talking about profit? That's oh, yeah. Profit. Yeah. Sure. That's profit. profit. Mm -hmm. So it's got to cost 20 or 30 to put the thing on, I would think. Oh, yeah. Boost. I would say every bit of it, maybe more. You know, I. So the, uh, the RC airplane club, you know, and, and we do that show at Hamilton Airport, and we had a little bit of a tough year this rain Saturday morning, but it cost us about thirteen or fourteen thousand dollars to put on the event, mm -hmm. and we ended up having a profit of like fifty-five hundred dollars. Well, so you know, you, you're you could be into it for a pile. Now that's a problem, you know, if you're in big mm -hmm. uh, and you get washed out. Well, look at the insurance. 
No, you can. Yeah. We, we do it for uh, we do it for Taste of Cincinnati. But that's a that's well. A and I'd just be curious to know because you know we have a lot of rain for Pioneer Days, and if we didn't have that, I'm not, I'm sure it wouldn't be OLR, but it could have looked a lot different. We actually didn't do too bad, all things considered. Hey, but think about this. I, I, got, I was involved with their very first uh, festival in 1987. Okay, at that particular time when they put on that festival, it was not about making money. It was about bringing the church community together as a whole and work together and, and have a celebration. That's what it was all about. And too, it was just like 15, 20 years later, it ended up becoming it, this is a very important thing. We need to make money because I, I, I didn't agree on the gambling, the drinking. I thought. My God, so all we're doing is taking away from the people that can't handle themselves. You know, that because they were the biggest profit margins. You know, that's the reason why we actually bought in that no so alcohol one day. You know, I like it. I like it all. Up. And they can drink beer. <laughs> yeah. There are well, a lot of people who have chicken dinner there. That's yeah. phenomenal. We, 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 well, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing people mean, bringing their checks and losing their The reason I'm bringing it up is is, is there an opportunity? Do you think they want to do another event? Okay, now listen to this. Here's the other thing that nobody knows about. Hold on a second. There's going there's to be a big wrench in Pioneer Days. OLR is thinking about moving into June. And I have to find that out because they usually plan ahead. I don't know anything about this. And when I heard that, that talk, i got to find out what's going on with that. Because if that's going to be middle of June, and that's right where we have arms. So I got to find out. I'll, I'll find out from the uh, the people who run it here in the next day or so. I just wonder if there's any capable way to help us. Right now, there are lots of ruts as far as my year days go. Um, I mean, it, even if it hadn't rained, Pioneer Days hasn't been overly right. successful. I think that's your question, right? Why is that so the fire department did the ox roast? Remember when they, they did the ox roast? Mm -hmm. I mean, they just sold those roast beef sandwiches like crazy. Well, I guess our department actually ran them back in those days, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Well, and it takes a lot of commitment. I mean, you oh, have yeah. to have a committee that's doing it. And 